Hello everyone, I'm Metagaming MG. Today we will analyze episode 67 part 3. The episode is 2 minutes long. We will talk about Titan TV Man coming back. We waited for part 3 like a time traveler. I can say that this episode was really good because it ended with an unexpected ending. This episode raised many questions. Where did G-Man Toilet go? What happened to the piston cameraman who fell and disappeared in the previous episode? Speakerman and Titan Camaraman started fighting. We don't know what happened. When will Titan Camaraman come back because he has suffered great damage since episode 65? He needs to be treated. And most importantly, is the scientist dead? Was the scientist real or is this a fake version of him? What is the real secret behind the scientist's new ability? These and many other questions we will answer in this video. The statement said that everyone has weaknesses. What does that mean? It's been a really crazy week. And finally, the Titan TV guy is back with updates after all this time. He looks so majestic. His TVs, his sword, his decisive stance and so much more. All the answers to all the questions are in this video. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it. I would also be happy if you subscribe and write your valuable comments and ideas below the video. Here I go if you are ready. The third installment of the 67 series really lived up to all my expectations. I was literally absolutely ecstatic when I first saw everything. It was exactly what we expected. However, there was so much more to this epic return, and it's hard to immediately find answers to all the questions you have on the first viewing. For example, why did the hypnotic Titan cameraman initially want to kill himself? But then, why didn't hypnosis pass to Titan Speakerman? Titan Speakerman himself was close to this trend, but he never killed anyone. But let's move on to the episode itself. Titan Speaker Man enters the scene before Titan Cameraman's head starts to explode and actually saves him from killing himself with his chainsaw. But in doing so, he accidentally damages his own core because he's trying to keep the Titan Cameraman away. We can see the Titan Talking Man trying to keep the Titan Cameraman at bay, but it looks like the Titan Cameraman is a bit stronger when it comes to sheer strength. Unless, of course, the Titan Talking Man decided to retreat because his core was damaged. Remember in my previous video, I said this was just for the sake of intrigue. They showed the wrong video sequence, probably to create an illusion, like Titan is going to die. So if you pay attention to the end of the second part, we can clearly see that at the moment when Titan was already on fire, there was not even a hint that someone would come to help. At that moment, the restroom duo is literally doing nothing and G-Man is still babbling in the background in the restroom. After the Titan speaker guy backs off, Titan cameraman tries to kill himself. The Titan cameraman is much stronger both physically and mentally. But despite that, the TV beam is so powerful that he has no feeling left in him. I guess no camera can be protected from it without a lens protector. Seeing this, the Titan Talking Man takes out his knife and without hesitation cuts the Titan Cameraman's arm. That actually helps because killing yourself with your bare hands, let's just say it's not that easy. When the scientist realizes he needs to change tactics, he turns the screen purple which, unlike red, commands him to kill himself, not himself. The Titan Speaker realizes that he needs to break the screen as quickly as possible to avoid fighting the Titan, and so he has placed a knife in his speaker to shoot. Titan Speakerman really doesn't look good, but despite all that, he's still standing and trying to save his friend. This guy has really outdone himself. We can see that he's on fire. He's got pieces of buildings piercing through his body, and his core is destroyed but he decides to attach one of his knives to his speakerman to shoot at the scientist toilets. The G-Man toilet suddenly distracts the Titan speakerman by shooting him with his two lasers. If you look carefully, no matter what he does, the Titan cameraman can't look away from the TV and his vision gets stuck there. And even after his arm is cut off, he's still trying to kill himself. Now he's trying with the other hand, punching himself in the head, it's a very sad and horrifying scene, to be honest. Let me remind you that we saw the same thing in the first episode when the speaker was first shown to us, but it was his lasers that prevented it. The impact was so strong that the speaker's right speaker fell. He was about to fight back, 
but then the hypnotized Titan starts fighting and puts his foot on it. Soon, the POV cameraman suddenly decides to take out his rocket launchers and shoot the scientist's toilet, but it has literally no effect on the TV screen. By the way, there's more. I told you to remember the moment we put the lens on. Hypnosis doesn't work on us because we have the lens, and the scientist successfully removed the titanium lens before turning on the screen. But then the logical question becomes, why wasn't the Titan speaker as aggressive as Titan for those who are new to this universe? I will say that speakers are not susceptible to hypnosis from the screen. We knew this from the old series. After all, the camera always has screen protection in the form of a lens, but the speaker does not. In principle, this makes sense. After all, in fact, they have speakers that cannot put light and most likely they are guided in space by sound waves. And then comes the epic part. The scientist turns his toilet grinning face to the POV, but suddenly the TV monitor disappears in an instant, and the expression on his face is a priceless scene. He is shocked and horrified at the same time, because he knows that the protection of this monitor is very good. Obviously, this was very unexpected, and they had not expected this to happen. Then we see the tired Titan after the hypnosis falling as he goes. He has very little energy after everything that's happened to him in the last couple of episodes. We also see the Titans and the Titan cameraman falling because he's no longer being controlled and we don't know how much damage he's taken. But one thing is for sure, I don't think we're going to see the Titan cameraman for a long time after this point because the upgrades and the restoration will take a lot of time. But all that aside, this is where the episode really begins, and where we finally get what we've been waiting months for. And of course we are shown smoke and suddenly lightning, the return of Titan TV Man. Suddenly, there's this huge black smoke with white lights coming out of it. And he clearly has a lot of energy. First of all, you'll notice his sword. It's very large in size. I want to point out that it's not just an accessory like this. It's an extension of his arm, because this sword glows the same color as his core and the energy he gets from it. This may not be his only trump card. I'm sure he will have other weapons. Seeing the Titan TV man, G-Man Toilet is so scared when he says something to the scientist's toilet, because he stops mid-sentence and literally runs away while screaming. Remember how scientist Skibidi Toilet abandoned one of the G-Man clones in episode 65? Now he's in his place, and the cowardly man left him here alone, unarmed. The traitor left his friend there without a care in the world. If the scientist toilet had known this would happen, he probably would never have kissed the G-Man toilet like he did in the troll leaks. Life must be hard when your best friend abandons you like this. This scientist toilet still looks very scared, but he knows his only option is to fight back. We can see the scientist toilet speechless and literally frozen with fear. Titan TV man gets rid of the fake TV and starts using the beam of the red TV. And if you look carefully while he's using it, all the monitors are coming out and the scientist toilet is trying to shoot him with rockets. But as you can imagine, they literally do nothing. The upgraded Titan TV man comes in with no mercy at all and cuts through the upgrades of the scientist toilet, starting from the right side and working his way to the left. Titan TV man sticks his knife into the head of the scientist toilet after the scientist says something into the toilet, but we don't see any blood coming out, and when he pulls it out, it's completely mechanical. Even though he's been stabbed in the head and there's a hole in his head, he's still alive. That could mean one of two things. Either there never was a real human being, or there is still a human body somewhere else. I think it's the second option because we've seen the scientist toilet before as a normal toilet and then suddenly it grew. And to be honest, I don't think the scientist toilet is completely dead, even if this version of it is dead. I think it has a body somewhere else and may actually have more robotic bodies sharing its consciousness around the world. Also note that this version has a red eye. Maybe that was an indicator for us. I don't think this scientist was a fraud, but I think it was a clone he made for himself. Maybe that's why his right eye was red. I guess we'll find out the truth later in the series. After drilling into his head, 
the Titan TV guy starts preparing for one of the craziest special abilities we've ever seen on the show. He sees that the scientist is still moving and decides to finish him off himself with his sword. And once the core is charged, the upgraded Titan TV guy uses the core laser and literally melts the face of the scientist's toilet. This laser is probably the most powerful laser in the series and then to fry him with his core. Unfortunately, it is unlikely that we will ever see him again because he left behind a burnt, burnt face. Wait a minute, he's not a real scientist so we're sorry to see our old friend. I'm sure he'll be back in future episodes. I remind you that in episode 63 we saw him with a normal eye but he appears with a red eye on his neck and the number two on his gun and it's worth noting that it vibrates constantly, even after very severe injuries. If we pay attention, it's made of metal and wires. The only thing that looks like a normal toilet is its skin, because we can notice the blood. However, we have already established that the skin of toilets can be perfectly replicated and is difficult to distinguish from the real thing. Here's my theory. It's not a trap. They didn't even know they'd encountered a Titan TV man on the move. The real original scientist is still small, and what we see after episode 60 are his clones, and they're numbered. So far there have only been two. The first version with normal eyes, and the second version is a more advanced version with red eyes. Most likely these are just the first examples to perfect the scientist's technology and make such clones in packs. Imagine that in the future there will be not one, not two, not even three, but ten such gigantic scientists. But in reality this is very unlikely. Most likely he will not make a lot of clones and will try to pump them into a maximum of a few pieces. After all, let me remind you that you leave the animations alone. And that's why in battle there are usually two, three or at most four characters at once. Then the Titan TV guy looks at the POV cameraman and makes a cute face, but he can't get near the face of this blood, which literally disappears after being lasered a few seconds after he says his last words in this episode. It really shows the duality of man. This guy just melted somebody's face and now he's making this face. We have a few questions to ask. What happened to the piston cameraman? because as you know he was there in the second episode and he was knocked out instantly and we didn't see him in this episode and my guess is that special agents will come and rescue him in the next episode what about the titan duo because they need to be fixed as soon as possible we also have a question where did g-man toilet go because he just got back and he's covered in blood i think he can come back sooner than we think because as we all know this is the base of the famous toilets and i don't think they will give up so easily don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it i would also be happy if you subscribe and write your valuable comments and ideas below the video Meta Gaming MG